we introduced not only the 2020 DLC that obviously uh, includes Imola and uh, the two new Evo cars, the Mercedes and the uh, Ferrari, but as usual we also introduced some uh, improvements to uh, the whole simulator and from my side I've worked uh, on some improvements of the tire model that by now you all have uh, feel and uh, understood how pretty much how, how it works uh, some improvements in the um, aerodynamics and uh, also some extra improvements on uh, on the uh, wet uh, on the wetness of the road um, so uh, let's uh, let's start with the tire model. So, what did we did on the tire model? Uh, I believe, and I hope that everybody has already tried it by now, and you like it. Um, but what what is the differences that you feel on the tire model? Uh, to do that, we are obviously going to do some of our typical uh, design schemes and graphs tonight. Um, so let's uh, let's see what we can do. Okay, right. So uh, the first thing I want to tell you is the changes we did on the um, uh, realignment forces of the tires. Uh, and obviously, to to tell you about that, I have to explain you a little bit what is a realignment force of the tire and how it works which I think it will be also interesting because you're going to uh, have a look on how the modern tire models of your racing sim simulators uh, work, you know, at the core of the uh, tire modeling. Okay, realignment forces. How are we going to explain this, what it is and why you feel the differences when you are driving? All right, so... Um, this is our tire, okay? This is our tire, and we are looking at the tire from above. The um, direction of movement is towards the up of, uh, of your screen, okay? And as I said, we are looking at the tire from above. Now, when we rotate the tire, okay? So when we rotate the tire like this, okay? Um, as you know, we generate a slippage from the direction of travel, and that slippage generates um, a lateral force that make your car turn. Now, this is pretty much, you know that, it's simplistic, but it's, easily, it's easy to understand, and I believe nobody has problems to understand this. Mm, where these forces generated? Well, ideally, the tire has uh, a footprint, okay? So this oval here, let's say, is the part where the tire touches the road, okay? And again, ideally, uh, when we steer uh, our, our tires, um, the tire, in theory, should uh, rotate uh, into a pivot, okay? So let's say for, for, our, for simplicity sakes that uh, this pivot uh, is at the center of the of the um, footprint. Okay. Great. So uh, when we do this, let me show you like that. Uh, so when when we rotate the tire, as I said, uh, the ideal footprint again rotates, and the pivot is the same, the center pivot, and we get a lateral force which eventually will start to uh, turn the car into the directions that we are rotating the tire. Easy, simple, no big deal. The footprint ideally should be just an oval or maybe kind of rectangle with rounded uh, edges, that would be. But in reality, the footprint of the tire is far than a simple oval, okay? So the footprint, when you are uh, driving like this, is, first of all, it is dynamic, it changes. And, it, and for small rotations, for small angles, and now the angle here is exaggerated, okay, uh, we are talking about small angles like one, two, three degrees of slip, okay, two, three degrees of slip. Uh, 
um, the um, the footprint uh, that touches the ground uh, is practically not sliding at all at the front, but sliding a lot at the rear. So it's like because like if the tire actually the tire flexes, but it flexes not as you know laterally. Okay. Uh, I'm not talking about the lateral. I'm talking again. We are looking at the tire from the top, okay, or from the bottom, even better. And we see the footprint of the tire, and the actual footprint that touches the ground flexes while you're trying to rotate the tire. Okay, it's like having your your fingers, okay, uh, touching a surface, and then you rotate, and you can see that something remains straight and something still starts to, to flex and, and rotates differently. All right, so what happens now? Um, because the footprint is not at all sy symmetric and uh, uh, centered on the pivot of rotation, it means that all this footprint will generate a lateral force, but obviously the lateral force is not generated exactly at the pivot of rotation. Because as I said, uh, the footprint goes behind, and so you get um, a lateral force that is generated somewhere behind the pivot of rotation. Okay. Now this is very important here. So as you can see, the lateral force that the tire generates is not exactly at the pivot of rotation, the axis of rotation, but it is generated behind the axis of, of, of rotation. Okay. Now, why is this so important? Because obviously, we rotate the tire into this center. Okay. So here, let's make it red. Okay, but the forces applied here on the white, which means that between those two points, you have a lever. Okay, you have uh, a lever where you rotate here, but the forces are applied here. Okay, Why, what is happening? When you have something like that, so you apply a force into a lever, you generate a torque. You generate a torque, which obviously wants to rotate also not only the car, but wants to rotate the actual um, tire. So what we are doing here is that we get this whole tire from straight like this and we try to rotate it. Okay? Great. Once we rotate it, it generates lateral force. But as I said, the lateral force here is not at the center of rotation, but it is a little bit behind. So it generates a lever. And that means that it generates a alignment torque and tries, as you can see, to counter rotate the tire back to the straight. So this force here, this torque actually, it's not a force, it's a torque generated by the lateral force because it doesn't act exactly at the pivot of rotation. It wants to rotate back the tire like this. Okay? So is this clear for you? Now, this torque is the alignment torque. Okay? And this is actually what happens and your tire wants to go back. Okay? This is, we are talking still without um, suspension geometry. So we just have an axis over the, the, uh, the tire. Okay? And nothing else. So let's, let's suppose that we don't have cambers, we don't have casters, we don't have anything. All right. So that means that if you release your steering wheel, your tires, because they are generating lateral force, they also generate um, a, a, an alignment torque, and they will want to go back into straight again. This is what you feel, it's not exactly, we will talk about that uh, again, but generally this is what uh, tries to uh, rotate the steering wheel back and the, uh, the wheels rotating straight again and go straight. All right. Kalispera um, Yorgo. 
Okay, so I hope it's clear until now. It shouldn't be that difficult to, to, to understand what is happening. Now, here's the, the magic that happens with tires, okay? Here's the magic that happens with tires. So as I said, this is the direction. So what happens if we rotate the wheel a lot? So if we try to do something like this, okay? So we, again, this is exaggerated because I remind you that this kind of rotation I'm talking about and this kind of alignment torque happens at the first two, one, two, three degrees, okay? Right. So what happens if we try to rotate the steering wheel a lot and so the tire rotates a lot and it generates a lot of slip? So we're talking something way over six, eight, ten degrees of slippage, okay? All right. So, again, we have our pivot, so this is the center of rotation. Now, here's what happens. The footprint does not remain exactly like here, but because we have generated so much slippage, as I told you before, it's not just the rear end of the footprint that slides. All of the footprint starts to slide because we are asking way too much. So the whole footprint of the tire starts to slide a lot. Okay? So when that happens, the footprint becomes longer, or at least the, the part of the footprint that slides is longer now. Uh, so this means that the force comes closer to our pivot. Okay, so the, so let me do this again, the red, let's make it red again, is the pivot, as here. Now, the generation of the force, let me show you, it has become closer to the pivot. Why is that? Because the generation of the, of the lateral force is again at the center of the whole footprint. Because the whole footprint now is longer, it slides longer, the whole proof it, uh, footprint generates lateral force and the center starts to come closer again to the center of rotation of the whole tire. What that means? It means that our lever is much smaller. Okay? And because it is smaller, the realignment torque is less. Okay, so here's what happens. Okay? When you rotate, when you try to turn a little bit with your steering wheel, you generate um, a lot of lateral force, but only the rear end of the footprint slides. And so this asymmetrical in the longitudinal axis uh, part of, um, of the force generation creates a long lever, and that creates a pretty high alignment torque, which wants to rotate back your steering wheel and the tires towards the straight. If you generate a lot of, uh, uh, of, of steering, if, you, if, you, if your steering input is uh, wide and you generate a lot, of, a lot of steering on the wheels and a lot of slippage, then the whole footprint starts to slide. Okay? And when this happens and the whole footprint starts to slide, obviously uh, the center of the footprint is closer to the center of rotation and that generates even if you generate even if you generate the same lateral force smaller lever means smaller um, alignment torque and as you said in the chat this might be the understeer effect so you turn lots of force on the on the steering wheel and then you turn more and the steering wheel becomes softer becomes um, less uh, less less stiff less strong Okay, this is exactly the reason. This is the reason why that is happening. Okay, so as you can think, it's uh, the, the 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 footprint of of the tire is very dynamic. It doesn't remain 
static. Even if it, uh, even if you already knew that the footprint flexes, it doesn't flex up and down, left and right, and that's it. No, it actually flexes in multiple ways. It's like, a, uh, I, I honestly, I, I couldn't find how to explain you uh, how actually the um, uh, the footprint flexes. Um, so yeah, this is not linear with grip, okay, uh, as Tortellini said, and we will talk about it, that in a, mi in a minute, but it is very important to understand that even if we generate the same amount of lateral force, okay, so let's, let's suppose that we can generate the same amount of lateral force, okay, the actual placement of where that lateral force is, is generated, and how long it is from the rotating axis of uh, uh, of the um, of the steering axis of of the wheel, okay, generates a lever, and that lever changes the amount of alignment torque that it is created. Joe, very good, uh, very very good um, intervention here. This is. We don't even have caster here. We are talking about no caster at all. Okay, uh, it's like having zero caster, and that's why you should understand this uh, a lot better. Okay. Um, so let's move ahead and see what happens even at farther uh, and wider slip pads angles. So here it is, and it is quite interesting. So if you keep on doing what you're doing. Okay, and let me show you again the pivot as red. So if you keep doing what you're doing, the front of the tire, and you keep asking more and more and more slippage from the tires, you keep rotating and you keep steering even more, okay? Um, and um, so practically, this is again our center of rotation. The footprint of the tire is going to slip so much that actually it's going to start slipping just with the front part of, uh, of, the, of, of the footprint. And that much slippage will actually bring the generation of the lateral force ahead, ahead of the rotation, the axis of rotation, right? The steering axis. And that means if you have uh, the generation of the, for of the force ahead of uh, the, uh, the steering axis, your lever is going to be at the front, which means that, again, you're going to generate some alignment torque, but it's going to be on the opposite. It's not, again, I remind you, this is how it goes until now. Okay, so it was rotating counterclockwise in into our example. So it tries to rotate back the wheel and make it go straight. And if you ask too much, it's going to be the, the lateral force is going to be generated ahead of the rotating axis, and the alignment torque is going to be generated clockwise in this example, obviously. We are steering towards right. Which means that not only your tire will not want to go back straight, but it will want to go to, to rotate even more. Okay, so this is why maybe you might remember some older sims at some point they had that issue that you would, you know, steer uh, the, um, the steering wheel and the steering wheel will become so light and at some point it will become completely, you know, um, uh, not, not only completely without any force, but actually it will try to uh, make you steer even more, okay? Now, that wasn't that the simulator had any issues. Probably the car that was simulating has so little caster that the alignment torque or even zero caster or some, sometimes this happens also with front wheel drive cars that have uh, even negative caster or the other way around. 
uh, and that makes your, your string will go into the third even more. Okay? Uh, so here's what happens and how the alignment torque is generated. Right? Now, again, I remind you, this is all without having any caster, any camber, anything. We are just talking a simple, si very single and simple rotating axis, completely vertical to the tire. Okay. Now, this is, does, doesn't happen like that in, in real life suspensions, but we do this simpl simplification to understand how it works. Okay. Um, so, this is what happens. Why is this important to us, and how that compares to, um, to, to the lateral force and the other forces that you feel from, uh, from, uh, from the tire? Now, as you remember, guys, this is practically how tires pretty much generate force. Uh, so practically, uh, you start rotating your, your steering wheel and the more you turn your your wheels the more angle of slippage you generate and the tires that we are simulating have a very actually they start generating grip you know and uh, at some point at some slippage at some angle of slip they will generate the peak grip they can generate if you ask more than that, then they will start generate less and less and less grip, and then at some point they flatten out, they flatten out the curve, and nothing happens. They just generate a flat grip, whatever you do with the steering wheel. All right, great. Again, it's very important. Most of you already know this. If you don't know, uh, I remind you: the tires that we're simulating, the Pirelli tires of the GT3 cars have a very very narrow uh, slip angle they generate their maximum grip at around five degrees okay so that is why you need to give very limited steering inputs if you overdo it you start having less grip and no uh, no sort of, of uh, uh, sensation from from the wheel okay I remind you again that road tires usually have a much wider uh, slip angle, so you can have a good semi-slick uh, or good rod uh, tire that generates the peak of the slip at around 9, 8 degrees, somewhere around there. And generally, as you can see, it's much smoother and you can play around much better because with a rod uh, tire you have all these uh, space to, to play with and you still generate grip and the car still feels whatever you uh, tell them to do while with a slick tire like the ones we use on the GT3 tires you have much more narrow uh, space to, to um, play with the grip so you have to find the grip and then move a little bit you cannot do that because that it's, it's, it will generate worse grip so you have to uh, you know move the uh, steering wheel less to feel the grip and to generate the proper grip. All right. So uh, the GT4 tires are similar to the GT3 tires, but they can generate a little bit wider, like six degrees, and there is not such a high peak like uh, like that. It's a little bit more smoother, but they're still slick tires, so uh, it's not. Uh, it's essentially not like the street tires. Um, okay, so this is what happens uh, with our slick tires. What is happening with the realignment force that we just explained? Well, here's the interesting thing. As I told you, the realignment force achieves its peak force, its peak torque. Uh, uh, sorry, it's a torque, not a force. Uh, let me also control this. So. So this is torque here, not force. It's very important to know what we say. So the realignment force, as I said, achieve its peak torque, its peak value at much less uh, slip angle, like one, two, three degrees, and then goes down. Okay. And as we described uh, practically on the pages before, 
the more sleep you give, the more goes down. So let's see what kind of uh, graph generates, okay? So here it is. Here's the graph of the realignment. It's the blue one, all right? So as you can see, it's very interesting because the maximum torque is generated much sooner, much sooner than the peak. This is why sometimes you might feel that you have the maximum force from, from your steering wheel, but even if you give it a little bit extra, you gain more grip. Okay, the, the car uh, turns more, the car reacts. So you turn your wheel, you have instant lots of force, because as you can see, instantly it generates a lot of torque. Okay. And then when, when you think that you have arrived at, at the limit, you give it a little bit more, like one, two, three degrees, okay, depending on the tire, and the car still generates more lateral grip because at the peak of uh, the alignment torque, you are not yet at the peak of the tire lateral grip or longitudinal grip, but we're talking about lateral grip. So that's very important, and that's number one. But as you keep asking for more and more and more, you go into this part of the lateral grip and the realignment torque goes down, 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 and it becomes even negative. Why? Because we explained it. It starts to be generated at the front of the tire and takes your steering wheel and moves it, you know, towards the turn. All right? Excellent. Now, all that is great and good. I hope that you have understood everything. What that has to do with uh, version 1.6? Didn't we uh, simulate the realignment torque before? Yes, we did. No problems. But uh, we are talking about um, we are talking about um, very small degrees here that make the difference so uh, you can understand that if you move half a degree this torque back and forth or you know back and forth like that half a degree already it makes quite a bit of a difference okay so in what kind of feelings you are going to to feel here um, so even having some extra data and managing to play a little bit left and right, it will give you a different feeling. And that's one. And then there is something more important. Now, usually we show this, this kind of graphs together for the lateral force and the realignment torque. But in reality, the realignment torque is something like this. It's really it's really, really minimal. Why it is like that? Because we are talking about, yes, of course we have, as I said here, of course we have a big lateral force, big lateral force. But the amount of, le the, the, the length of the lever that is created here are millimeters. We have exaggerated the whole footprint, but in reality, the footprint is some centimeters, and obviously the center of the footprint moves some millimeters back and forth. So we are talking about a very, very small lever. So even if you have a very big number of the force, the lever that you're going to you know, multiply it is extremely small, extremely small. So the realignment force is by itself really 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 small okay on top of that you add the actual um, alignment of the suspension especially the caster and this thing becomes from that it becomes something that it is you know completely let me show you if i can something that becomes almost completely flat something like this Right, because the caster obviously it's going to exaggerate the lever, takes the, 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 the forces and the torque from the uh, footprint of the tire, and then it leverages everything into the suspension geometry. So completely different. Right. Again, you might ask, uh, all right, if all that happens, 
then why we feel the difference? Well, here's the interesting thing, because as I said many, many times, uh, we uh, have practically gone away from the era where, you know, tire modeling and a couple of values on the tire modeling would make the simulator. Uh, all the modern sims have so many parameters that even s very, very small details make quite a difference and all together make a difference in feeling. So moving this curve a little bit like that, a little bit like this, finding the correct data, finding some errors that we had and readjusting everything again makes a difference in the steering wheel feel. But most importantly, there are some situations where you have, for example, the uh, let's let's do it like that. So there are some situations that you might have um, your uh, let me let me paint this uh, green. OK, so you are steering with your steering wheels and you are moving into this curve. Right. And you might be here somewhere. Okay, now here's the problem. If you have a realignment force that looks something like this, okay, a realignment torque, sorry, it means that your tire here already starts to slip, right? Starts to slide, it loses grip. Okay, so let's say that this is not the front tire anymore, but it is the rear tire, right? And so your tire here starts to lose grip and you are moving somewhere around here, okay? And by moving somewhere around here, uh, your rear end starts to slide and you start having some oversteer. Now, the more the rear end starts to slide, the more the torque, the realignment torque starts to go down and it might even go negative, depending on what values you're using. We are talking about small values, but it's still a torque and you are just right on the limit. Anything, even, you know, a little bit of extra wind, okay, can provoke the car to slide even more. And so if you have an important alignment torque um, and it goes into negative, that means that this torque will help the tire slide even more. OK, but if on the other hand, instead of having this kind of torque, OK, you have improved your numbers and it turns out that the torque is a little bit less and maybe it's a little bit uh, also different. OK, so maybe it's something like that. Small, small changes. We're not talking something big, small changes. That means that, OK, the tire might still want to slide, but the the speed of change in torque and in lateral force of that tire will also change. And that might give you, the driver, the extra time to react. And this is the change that we have in 1.6. So we are talking about insignificant, really insignificant uh, differences in values, like nothing okay, in values of the realignment torque. But it gives you just a tiny bit of extra um, time to react. And that extra time is the difference between 1.5 uh, version of Assetto Corsa when, when a spin, when an oversteer would start, you had to be extremely fast and that would make you also less because if, when you are very fast it will make you less precise and the car will do strange uh, you know movements or you will simply lose it at medium to slow speeds and in 1.6 the car starts to slide you can be more precise with your counter steering and the car will still stay there and you can catch it and catch it back and you know move on the same also happens during um, uh, during understeer. You go into the turn, you start having some understeer, so you move around here. Let me actually make this also here. Okay. Now before that, it will go here, and it will start 
having even more, you know, uh, understeer. You wouldn't even realize it, but it will make the car understeer even more, right? But now instead it stays somewhere around here, okay? And that means that you can play a little bit and still feel some extra grip. So this is practically what happens now with the real argument course. Some extremely small changes, extremely small uh, differences in a couple of variations, specifically in the realignment torque. And actually, I gave this to the beta testers. And they, I told them nothing about that. And told them, you know what? You might have something new in the tire model, but you might not. Try it. Let me know what, what you feel. The guys got back and, oh my god, everything has changed. What is this? Incredible here and there. And what is happening? I was like... Guys, you're all at the big placebo because, okay, yes, I can feel the changes. I like them a lot. But, you know, when you know what you have done and uh, uh, you know that the changes are small, you feel the changes. They are subtle. It's not day and night. And you know that the changes are small in the values. So you extra convince yourself that, yeah, no big deal. It's cool. Very nice. I like it. We made a step forward, but, you know. It's not a completely different stuff. But for someone that didn't know the changes, it was like, oh, this is amazing. This is fantastic. And I was like, guys, you are in full placebo. I haven't changed so many things. No, no, this is so much better. So the conclusion here is modern tire models, Soto Corsa, racing, where factor two, whatever, uh, are so complex that even tiny differences could make a hell of a difference in experience, in feel, in, in improvement. Um, um, and it's, it's a, a, a constant um, research, development, uh, tries, uh, experiments. So, yeah. And uh, yes, of course, Lucas, otherwise we wouldn't do it. It's not like we take, you know, a couple of values and, okay, let's see what the dice will give us. Five. Let's put five there. You get the data. You try to find out what is happening. Some things work, some things doesn't work. So even on the data that you don't have, you try to go and do reverse engineering and so on. This is what happened actually uh, in the tire model. 